Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into a design pattern that is an absolute game changer for writing flexible, maintainable code. We're talking about the decorator pattern. It lets you add new superpowers to your objects on the fly without getting tangled up in a messy web of subclasses. You know, this quote from the book Dive Into Design Patterns just nails it. Patterns aren't just clever bits of code, they're distilled wisdom. They're like the collected experience of thousands of developers who hit the same wall you did and found a really elegant way to get over it. And this gets us right to the heart of the problem we're solving today. It's such a classic developer dilemma, isn't it? You get what seems like a simple feature request, but trying to implement it threatens to blow up your whole class structure into a confusing mess. I think we've all been there. Okay, so let's dig into this with a famous example that makes the problem crystal clear. We're gonna head over to the Starbuzz Coffee Shop, a case study made famous by the amazing Head First Design Patterns book. So here's the deal. Starbuzz needs to figure out the total cost of a coffee. A customer can order a basic drink and then add whatever they want, a shot of milka, some soy milk, a dollop of whipped cream. Seems simple enough, right? But the real trick is how we decide to build this system. So our first instinct as object-oriented programmers might be to reach for inheritance. It makes sense, you know? We could have a base beverage class and then just create a specific subclass for every single possible order. You want a mocha espresso? That's a class. A soy mocha espresso? That's another class. You see where this is going. And yeah, you immediately see the problem. This just doesn't scale. What happens when the boss wants to add, say, caramel syrup or oat milk? You'd have to create a whole new explosion of subclasses for every combination that already exists. This is what we call a class explosion. And it is a one-way ticket to a code base that nobody wants to maintain. Okay, before I show you the beautiful solution to this, we have to talk about one of the most important principles in all of software design. It's a philosophy that helps us build flexible, resilient systems instead of rigid, brittle ones. This is the open, closed principle. And when you think about it, what it means is pure genius. Our code should be open for extension, meaning we can add new functionality to it, but it should be closed for modification. We shouldn't have to crack open existing, tested, working code just to add a new feature. So with that brilliant principle in mind, let's look at how we can build a much better solution for Starbuzz. We're gonna use the decorator pattern, which perfectly follows that open for extension, closed for modification idea. See, instead of inheriting, we're gonna compose. We start with our basic object, a house blend coffee. Now, to add mocha, we don't change the object, we literally wrap it in a mocha object. Want whipped cream on top of that? No problem. We just wrap our new mocha object in a whip object. We can stack these wrappers like little Russian dolls, dynamically, at runtime in any order we want. So how does the cost get calculated? This is the really clever part. When we ask the outermost wrapper, the whip object, for the total cost, it doesn't know the full answer. It just says, okay, my cost is 10 cents, plus whatever the thing I'm wrapping costs. Then it passes the request down. That request keeps delegating all the way down the stack until it hits the base house blend. Then the final answer gets built as each wrapper adds its own cost on the way back up the chain. It's a beautiful little chain reaction. So, boom, we get our final correct price of $1.19. And the most important part, we did it all without ever creating some rigid one-off house blend with mocha and whip class. We just combined behaviors on the fly. That is the power of this pattern. Okay, we've seen the magic in action. Now let's pull back the curtain and look at the formal structure. Once you understand the key players here, you can use this pattern pretty much anywhere. At its core, the decorator pattern is a classic case of favoring composition over inheritance. Inheritance creates a static is a relationship. A mocha espresso is a beverage, and that's locked in when you compile the code. But composition creates a dynamic has a relationship. Our beverage has a mocha wrapper, and we can add or even remove that wrapper whenever we want. So the pattern has four main roles. You've got the component, which is the common interface that the original object and all the decorators share. Then you have the concrete component, that's our base object, like the house blend. 
the abstract decorator is what holds a reference to the thing it's wrapping. And finally, the concrete decorator, like mocha or whip, is what adds the new behavior. The secret sauce is that they all share that same component interface, which is what makes them all interchangeable. And listen, this pattern goes way beyond just coffee. Think about handling data, another perfect use case. You could start with a basic file data source object. Then you need to add encryption? Just wrap it in an encryption decorator. Then you need to compress it? Fine, wrap that whole thing in a compression decorator. You're layering on new responsibilities one by one without ever touching the original code. All right, let's bring this all home. Let's talk about where you've probably already seen this pattern without even realizing it, and then we'll sum up the key takeaways. This is so cool. If you've ever worked with Java's input slash output streams, you've already used decorators. A file input stream gives you basic byte-by-byte -byte reading from a file. But to add more efficient buffered reading, you just wrap it in a buffered input stream. You're literally decorating the original stream with new capabilities. So what are the trade-offs? I mean, no pattern is a silver bullet. The pros are huge. You get incredible flexibility. You can add and remove behaviors at runtime, and you're perfectly following the open-closed principle. The main con is that it can lead to a lot of tiny single-purpose classes in your project, which can sometimes make setting up your initial stack of objects a little more complex. And that brings us to our final thought. The next time you're about to create a brand new subclass just to add one or two small features, stop. Ask yourself the question on this slide. Could this rigid inheritance structure be transformed into a flexible stack of wrappers? Chances are, the decorator pattern might just be the elegant, clean solution you've been looking for. Thanks for watching.